Hello everyone, welcome to something a bit different. Well, a bit the same, but a bit different at the same time. Um, so, uh, at the moment, I'm helping a friend of mine and no stranger to the channel, uh, Reaper, help, uh, trying to help him learn how to code. And I sent him a book that I indirectly learned of, learnt off, Christ. And um, on reflection, I, I was fine learning from it because I already had a couple of years experience in, in programming. And I think learning from scratch with that book isn't really working and it's not really set up or designed in that kind of way. So I thought to myself, well, I'm answering all these questions for him. Um, all, all this basic stuff that seems to be missing, like, um, like just explaining what some words mean and what some terms mean and how they relate to programming and how they relate to real life. And th there seems to be a, a decent reception from him at least. So uh, whether he's lying to me or not, it's another thing altogether. But um, I, I thought I'd give it a go to some like basic lessons. And I, you know, I wrote up some lesson plans and stuff. And I thought I would just give it a go and see what you guys thought. Um, so this is lesson one. And there is code on the screen, but we're not gonna actually read it. I just wanted to put something up. This will be the first piece of code you learn. Um, watching this and basically any tutorial this will be the code that you learn um, and I can show you what it does I should have checked it but built actually <laughs> um, and it brings up a, a very valid point about coding um, where did you build to uh, literally all it does is print something to the screen hello world hello world is the look I learned know how to program program. Um, every time you learn a new language, you learn how to do hello world. It does a lot of different concepts um, and how to like do very basic syntax. So I thought I'd just go through some stuff and have at least some code on the screen so you're not just staring at my lovely face. So the, the first question that needs answering when you think about coding or programming is what are you actually programming? What is programming? What are you actually doing? And what is the purpose of it? Uh, what problems you can solve with programming and what you can't, more importantly what you can, and how computers work at a very high level overview. So let's start with the simple one. What is programming? Programming is a series of instructions that you feed into a computer. That might seem pretty simple and to be honest it is pretty simple. You tell the computer exactly what you want it to do. And I'll, I'll touch on this a little bit later, but that, that what I've just said is important. You, they do exactly what you tell them to do. So that's what programming is. Literally just a series of instructions. Now, the one on screen, is, it's literally one instruction. Well, technically speaking, it's one instruction. It's a little bit more than that in the back, but we'll say it's one instruction. But, you know, uh, my game engine is you know, thousands and thousands of instructions and, you know, bigger programs like Windows, that's, you know, millions and millions of lines of code. They're all instructions. Um, so obviously based on the complexity of what you're doing, is it the complexity of your program? It's the amount of instructions you need. Generally speaking, any basic thing you can do in real life can be done in one instruction. So adding two numbers together, once again, technically speaking, under the hood, it's a little bit different, but technically speaking, adding two numbers together, that's one instruction. Any kind of math operation like that, simple, simple math operation is one instruction. You know, you've got other math operations like um, matrix multiplication and stuff, which are hundreds of instructions, which I have written functions and instructions for that, and they fucking suck. But that's neither here nor there, and that's not the purpose of this lesson, so let's not go into that. So what is the purpose of programs? You, you could think of it as a way of automating a task or executing some kind of calculation. Now, when, when you think of it in that kind of broad term, you say, well, what's a game then? Well, a game is automating a task. It is automating taking what you are telling the computer to do via the keyboard and mouse and applying that to some characters and redrawing them. It's a very, very simple overview, but that's pretty much what it does. Um, and it's also doing a lot of calculations in the background, how you draw things, how you animate things, and all that kind of stuff. But once again, that's a very basic overview. Obviously, there's a lot that fits into those two categories. 
but that is the, the most simplest way you can describe what a program actually is used for. Now, in the case of the one on the screen right now, literally all it does is display some text on the screen. It's not the most useful program, but hey, it serves its purpose. It automates displaying text on the screen. You push the button and it displays Hello World on the screen. Pretty simple. You could have something like a um, Pi calculator, which um, if you've seen, I think it's called Pi Prime. No, that's, that's the Prime calculator. Um, Pi 95, I think it's called. It will actually just automate solving the digits of Pi up to 32 million, I think. And that really chews up your CPU time because it is a very complex set of instructions done very rapidly. So th that is the kind of things that a computer program can do. Basically, in this day and age, you're pretty much only limited by your imagination. If you can think, hey, I want my computer to do this, chances are it can do it, short of proper human thinking. Um, computers aren't very good at being autonomous. Autonomous? I can't say that word. I hope I'm saying it right. But pretty much everything else they can do. You, know, you do hear AI being bound around a lot, but it's never going to be as um, intelligent as humans. And that's another thing I'll, I'll sort of throw back to because computers do exactly as you tell them to and humans don't always do that. If you've ever had kids, you, you probably know this very well. So ad identifying problems and how to solve it is, is the main crux of what someone like me, a software engineer, will actually do. Now, at my last job, I created, or I helped create a communication system, uh, phones, radios, cameras, all that kind of stuff. Audio mostly, but you know, some video and some security stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty complex for the most part, but what, what I did a lot was, here is a new feature. I want this one thing to happen. Well, okay, there's your problem. I need to have this thing in there. So then you go, okay, well, I need this really complex task to happen. Let's break it down into smaller tasks and smaller tasks and smaller tasks. And then you go, okay, how do I solve each of the smaller ones? How do they relate to each other? And you go back up the chain. That, that's my way of programming. Um, it doesn't always work that way. Some people do top down, some people do bottom up. Some people just sort of do what they do. There's no one way to do it. There is no single way of doing any one problem. Give or take something simple like putting some text on the screen, although I can think of about six different ways you can do that just here. But uh, the, it, it's the, the ends justifies the means kind of coding. As long as it works in the end and it's efficient and does what you need it to do, you've done a good job. Um, I've had many times at work when I would do a solution to a problem and it's better or worse than someone else's solution to a problem or it's objectively the same, but the way we've come to that conclusion is different. So th th you will never see someone say, you didn't do it exactly the way I would do it, therefore it's wrong, unless they're an asshole, in which case you should ignore them. So that, that's the, um, the basic gist of it. A, a lot of time when I'm coding as well, I'll, I'll, um, and this is a term I had to look up because I found it and I forgot it. It's a term called yak shaving, um, where when you go to do one task, you have to go do another task, to do another task, to do another task, to do another task, and you go down this rabbit hole of tasks. I just wanted to do one thing, but it's so broad. I have to do a million other things under it. Very common and very something that you have to get used to if you want to be any kind of programmer or software engineer. But th that is something you'll see when we come into more complex problems, uh, especially something like the game engine. I'll, I'll, I will be going into that a little bit um, at, a, at a later time when we go a few more lessons deep and sort of show you the inner workings of that um, and how it all comes together. So the last point I wanted to bring up is the fact that computers aren't smart. That might be hard for someone who has used a smartphone, hence the name, to wrap your head around. Um, but computers are not smart. Computers are very, very dumb things. The smarts that go into it are made by people like me, humans. I'm not saying I'm smart. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, um, computers can only do exactly and I mean exactly what you tell them to do. If you, which is why AI programming is is such a like a broad and very difficult topic to to do. Um, if you are doing AI programming, you have to program in variance and random thinking and and working out. You know, well, 
I'm a human, so okay, if I'm driving down the highway, this is actually a problem that's currently trying to be solved. If you have a um, self-driving car and you're driving down the road and your car has a choice that someone's just pulled out in front of you, there's four people in that car. There's one person in your car. If you hit this person, those four people are gonna die. But you could go off the road into a pole and you will die and those four people will be saved. What do you do? There, there is no right answer. You cannot just say that and go, no, definitely I would do this. Because there, there is no, like you can't program that as a binary option. You can't just go yes or no because humans will think differently on this topic. And as a result, to program that into a computer is, it, it's a little bit weird because you go, well, I wouldn't have done that. But the car did and now I'm dead or they're dead as a result of this and it's either on my conscience or on their conscience or I'm dead and my family is now destitute because I don't have money to earn and yeah, that's a bit morbid, I am so sorry, but that is that is a literal problem, that is a literal argument that is being waged in the AI programming community. What would you do in this space? So th that is something that you have to realize that when someone says the computer is not doing what I'm telling it to do, no, 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 it is doing exactly what you tell it to do. And that is something I say a lot. The computer isn't doing what I tell it to do, but it's like, I know better. I'm the one screwing up. I'm so sorry. But that's the way it goes. If, if your computer program is not working, I'm sorry. It is 100% your fault. That's why I love bug fixing because it's just like, I can point out all the shit that you've done wrong, mate. Usually me though, but we won't get into that. So that was, that was just a really quick introduction to what programming actually is and more importantly, what it isn't it isn't something that is thinking. It isn't something that is, you know, it can think on its own, it's not autonomous. It's everything that you tell it to do. And that's the most important thing that you can remember when programming. It will do what you tell it to do. It is useful for solving problems. It is useful for automating tasks. It is useful for doing massive calculations that you could not do in a lifetime. It could do in a minute kind of thing. That's a little bit of exaggeration, but that is very true. I, I'm not very good at like times tables. This thing could work out a million times. Well, it's not really hard to work out a million times something, but you get the idea. Big number times another big number, and it will work out what the big number is. And and that's that's pretty much all for this one. Um, I've got a, a fairly comprehensive four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine pretty much fully fleshed out. Um, lessons to do which goes into C++ and programming and logic and all the things you have to think of a lot of this stuff um, it doesn't matter what you want to program or how you want to program or what you want to program on it will be applicable um, but some of it won't be and if you wish to follow along I highly recommend you grab a Visual Studio community if you are on Windows or Visual Studio Code, and I believe there is a C++ plugin for that if you're on Linux or Mac. You can do other things um, on Linux and Mac, but I will be 100% honest with you, I don't know how to do those off the top of my head, or even if I started dicking around with them, I probably couldn't tell you anyway. Um, so if you wanna follow on, that is the best way to do it. Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code are both free. Um, they are quite hefty downloads though, so I uh, do it now <laughs> in advance. Um, I think my download is about nine gig, but I've got a lot of extra shit that you don't need. Um, but when you do install Visual Studio, there'll be a tick box for C++ development or desktop development. I can't remember exactly which one, but that is the one you want if you want to follow along. If you're unsure, just, just tick everything. Your computer might slow down a bit though, and I apologize. Uh, that is all for this one. Um, if you liked it, let me know. If you something I missed, let me know. Something I can improve on, let me know. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. So I had a bit of a think about it after the lesson finished, and I should probably just like show you um, what the Visual Studio should work should look like. This one here is the one you need: a desktop development with C++. The rest of this stuff is stuff that I do. You do not need that. Um, if you click that right there, you will get basically everything you need to follow along. Um, the rest of this stuff is, it's, it's, other, it's other stuff. It's, it's not what you need. It's what I use, it's not what you use. Um, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. If you wanna choose a different language, obviously do that. 
um, and the installation location. I can't change mine because I'm actually in my modifier rather than installer. But that is the one you need. Um, feel free to click all of them if you really want to. It's just going to use up a bunch of space that you don't need it to use. But as long as you have that one, at least in the Visual Studio installer, you'll be good to go. So I just thought I'd give you this quick update.